Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at polynomial division remainders, the factor theorem, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So how in general can we find division remainders easily? We've seen that when we divide a polynomial by another, there may be a remainder. Namely, if we divide x squared plus 2x plus 3 by x plus 3, which we can do by polynomial long division, then we obtain x minus 1 plus the number 6 over x plus 3. This number here, 6, is our remainder. When the remainder is 0, it represents a special case when the division is exact. If instead we have x squared plus 4x plus 3, and we divide by again x plus 3, and we use polynomial long division, then we end up getting just x plus 1. There is a remainder of 0 on the end of our expression. And this is called exact division, not having any remainder. We would like to interpret this case and determine its implications. So what exactly is the factor theorem? When the remainder of a division is 0, we say that the divisor is a factor of the dividend. So if we had, for example, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 over x plus 3, which results in 2x plus 1, then because there is no remainder, we say that our divisor, x plus 3, is a factor of the dividend, 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. There is a simple way to test if the remainder of a division is 0, without having to do polynomial long division. In this case, we can let our dividend be f of x. So we're going to let f of x be the function 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. And then what we do is to consider the value of f of minus 3. We will see why in a moment. This gives us 2 lots of minus 3 all squared plus 7 lots of minus 3 plus 3. By expanding, this gives us 18 minus 21 plus 3. And this value is 0. So it turns out that x plus 3 being a factor of our dividend f of x is equivalent to f of minus 3 being 0. We've taken the minus of our plus 3. This observation is summarized in the factor theorem. So in general, the factor theorem says that given a polynomial f of x, x minus a is a factor of f of x if and only if the value of f of a is 0. More generally, ax plus b is a factor if and only if f of minus b over a is 0. This is the factor theorem. This gives us a method of determining whether a linear expression is a factor of a polynomial f of x without having to do polynomial long division. Let's say, for example, that we let f of x be 3x squared plus x minus 14. If we consider, for example, f of 7, we get 3 lots of 7 all squared plus 7 minus 14. This gives us 147 plus 7 minus 14. This is 140. And therefore, since f of 7 is not 0, we can conclude, for example, that x minus 7 is not a factor. However, if we consider f of minus 7 over 3, then we get 3 lots of minus 7 over 3 all squared plus minus 7 over 3 minus 14. This gives us 49 over 3 minus 7 over 3 minus 42 over 3. And this is 0. And therefore, since we have shown that f of minus 7 over 3 is 0, we are able to conclude by the other part of the factor theorem that 3x plus 7 is a factor. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to show that x minus 1 is a factor of x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12. Our first step is to recall the factor theorem for a factor of the form x minus a. If we have a polynomial f of x, then x minus a is a factor of f of x if 
and only if f of a is equal to zero. Our second step is to define a relevant function. We want to consider factors of x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12. So we're going to let f of x be indeed x cubed plus 6x squared plus 5x minus 12. Our third step is to determine the value to input into the function. If we're able to show that f of 1 is equal to 0, by the factor theorem, we will be able to conclude that x minus 1 is a factor, which is what we need to do. So we need to consider f of 1. Our fourth step is to determine the output. The value of f of 1 by our definition of f of x is going to be 1 cubed plus 6 lots of 1 squared plus 5 lots of 1 minus 12. This gives us 1 plus 6 plus 5 minus 12. And this is equal to 0. Our last step is to interpret the output. We have shown that f of 1 is equal to 0. And therefore, by the factor theorem, this gives us that x minus 1 is a factor. Our second example asks us to show that 2x plus 3 is a factor of 6x cubed plus 17x squared plus 14x plus 3. Our first step is to recall the factor theorem for a factor of the form ax plus b. Given f of x, where f of x is a polynomial, we have that ax plus b is a factor of f of x if and only if the value of f of minus b over a is 0. Our second step is to define a relevant function. Again, we're looking at the factors of our expression above, so it's sensible to let our f of x be that expression, namely 6x cubed plus 17x squared plus 14x plus 3. Our third step is to determine the value to input into the function. If we can show that f of minus 3 over 2 is equal to 0, then we are able to conclude by the factor theorem that indeed 2x plus 3 is a factor. Our fourth step is to determine the output. We have f of minus 3 over 2 is going to be equal to, by the definition of f of x, 6 lots of minus 3 over 2 all cubed, plus 17 lots of minus 3 over 2 squared, plus 14 lots of minus 3 over 2, plus 3. This gives us 6 times minus 27 over 8, plus 17 times 9 over 4, and then we have a minus 21 and a plus 3. In terms of quarters, this gives us minus 81 over 4, plus 153 over 4, and then we have the minus 21 plus 3, giving a minus 18, producing a minus 72 over 4. And this indeed, we can check, is 0. Our last step is to interpret the output. We've shown that f of minus 3 over 2 is equal to 0. And therefore, by the factor theorem, we can conclude that 2x plus 3 is a factor of f of x, as required. Our last example tells us that given x plus 1 is a factor of 5x cubed minus 9x squared plus 2x plus a, we are asked to find the value of a. Our first step is to recall the factor theorem for a factor of the form x minus a. If we have f of x is a polynomial, then the factor theorem states that x minus a is a factor if and only if f of a is 0. The a here is not the same as our a in the question. Our second step is to define a relevant function. We're looking at the factors of this expression here, the cubic, and therefore it's sensible to let our f of x be this cubic, namely f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 9x squared plus 2x plus a. Our third step is to determine the value to input into the function. We know that x plus 1 is a factor, as we've been given this in the question. And therefore, using the if and only if statement above in the factor theorem, we know that f of minus 1 is equal to 0. Our fourth step is to form an equation using the factor theorem. Since we know that f of minus 1 is equal to 0, we can substitute in minus 1 into our f of x, and we get 
5 lots of minus 1 all cubed, minus 9 lots of minus 1 all squared, plus 2 lots of minus 1, and then we have the plus a, and this must be equal to 0. This is our equation for a. Our fifth step is to solve the equation. We have a minus 5 and a minus 9, and then a minus 2 plus a is equal to 0. The number here is minus 16. So we have minus 16 plus a is equal to 0. And then by rearranging, we get that a is equal to 16. Our last step is to write down the value of a. We've shown that a is equal to 16 using the factor theorem. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snapify smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.